Hey everybody, welcome back. We are in ArcGIS Pro today. And um, I'm kind of doing a, a uh, edit, not an edit really, but um, a supplement to a video series I did a while back on Anno features and editing uh, the symbology in a Anno feature class. And so it, I'm not redoing that video, but this is to replace the last few minutes of that video. Anyway, we are going to show you the probably the easiest way to change the symbology of an Anno feature class without having to go into the database. So let's get started. So we have our annotation feature class right here. And I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to click on annotation. Now when you have annotation clicked on, you can select your annotation that you want to work on. Now what I'm going to show you is first for instance, we're going to take Beer, uh, Bear Peak and we're going to kind of move it up a little bit because this is actually the peak right here under uh, Quartzite Mountain. And Quartzite Mountain's symbol is right here. So yeah, it's a little bit messy. So what I'm trying to do is clean up this map. So let's move Quartzite and just drag that over here. All right, now this is Bear Peak right here. So now what I want to do is if I right click at the moment and I can uh, not convert, add leader, you're going to notice that that leader is a thick black line. All right, let's say we didn't want that. We want it to look like this thin brown line that I've been putting. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do that uh, and change change the orientation of this, how this text appears in the box. Now, I need to tell you that uh, most of you know this, okay? This is pretty much for those getting uh, started in ArcGIS. Um, but these labels or these annotations were created from uh, labels to begin with. I set all the parameters up for doing labels first. And then when I had my labels created the way that I wanted them at the moment, I converted those to an annotation feature class. If you want to know how to create an annotation feature class, I did a three-part video a while back on how to do that. So anyway, this is an this is an annotation feature class, and we're making some edits to what I had already told it to do previously. Does that make sense? I think, I hope. All right, so by default, when I added this leader, it adds it as its default, okay, a thick black line. So I'm going to right-click that again, and I'm going to delete the leader. Now, in order to get to the properties of this annotation, I just basically simply come up here and press Attributes, and it brings up that symbology um, that symbology box that we're, we all know and love from adding uh, labels and things like that. Now, this is only one class. Uh, I didn't break it up. I'm just doing mountains right now. So this is not multiple classes, but um, you can do it with multiple classes. So I just have one class of annotation, class one, which is the default name. Now, with annotation selected and the attributes open, I can simply go into the symbol and I can come down here to call out. 
call out is where you set the style of the leader all right and so I'm going to instead of doing a simple line which does does a straight line I want to give more power to the actual leader than just a simple line so I'm going to choose background and then I'm going to come down here where it says leader line symbol and I'm going to change that to a line that is 0.5 points wide I don't want a thick line and I'm going to change its color to the brown that I've been using <coughs> Okay, and we're going to leave, no, we're not. I'm going to change it right now. Um, for the leader style, I want it to kind of bend down to the mountain. Okay, I don't want a straight line to it because I have uh, quartz mountain to get around first because these two mountains are in line with one another, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a style that is what I'm interested in which is straight out and then down and then I'm going to hit apply and then um, I want to bring the elevation directly to the back of where it says bear peak all right now you notice that bear peak is on one line and the elevation is on the second line these are I made that determination when I did the labeling before I converted to an Anno feature class. Okay, so it does all the centering and uh, new lines for you know stacked lines of text. All right, that was done in the labels, but I can edit how that works by using the basically the attributes and doing the symbols so let's for instance i'm going to delete that line and then i'm going to put a space in there and now i'll have the elevation after the name of the mountain and then you can also change your your uh, justification uh, and you can even do the point size of the text and all that stuff and I'm going to simply apply. So notice that now my elevation's at the end. But you notice we don't we don't have our leader. Where'd it go? Well, right click, add leader, and then here's your green handle for your leader, and you can stretch that out and then point it to your feature. And there you go. That's the easy way to change the characteristics of a symbol, a text symbol, for an annotation feature class. You don't have to go into the database and do a whole bunch of stuff. Sometimes you do, but this is much easier for doing like quick and dirty layouts and things like that. Okay? Now, here I just did one. All right, but let's say that I want to do more than one at a time. All right, because I don't want to have to change each characteristic. So let's say every one of these mountain names. So I'll select Quartzite Mountain. I'll select Bennett Mountain. I'll select Goat Mountain, and I'll select Big Bushy Mountain. All right, and notice they show up in my list over here in my attributes. Okay, now if I make a change right now, only the one that's selected will have that property changed. So in order to change all the properties of the selected annotation at once, you need to select them again in your, your list over here. So I'm selecting my... Uh, holding down the shift and my left mouse button so they're all selected and then I'm gonna go to symbol and then I'm gonna go to call out and then I'm gonna go to background and I'm gonna scroll down to where leader line is and I'm gonna select my line make that 0.5 points and change the color 
to my brown and yeah I want it to have some some breaks here and then I'm gonna apply now messing with the text itself you still have to do them one at a time all right so like before I put the elevation at the end of the name if you have a whole bunch selected you can't do that kind of stuff but you can go back uh, now the leader stuff has already been applied so now we're just dealing with text and of course this is uncommitted attributes I'm gonna go ahead and apply that now you can uh, do your individual text stuff that you wanted Okay, so select these. You may not want your text stacked, so make your change there. Okay, Goat Mountain, delete that, move that over, hit apply. Uh, big Bushy Mountain, delete that, put a space, hit apply. Okay, now you have all of your, your annotations set up. Now it's just a matter of specifying how you want the uh, leaders to go. Now you notice that that 70 inside this, this highway showed up is because Bennett Mountain was over top that and it had priority. So the 70 didn't show up inside the shield, but now it does now that I moved it. Okay, so let's move this over here and let's go ahead and right click and add our leader and point it to our mountain. Okay, and quartzite, I believe, if you can't remember, like right now, I'm going to select and I'm going to select a mountain and that is goat mountain there so I have it pointed at the wrong one so this is big bushy mountain alright so I'm going to go back to annotation and I'm going to select goat mountain and I'm going to move it over here select my green handle point it at the correct mountain and then I believe that this is probably bushy mountain here Whoops, 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 there we go. Bushy Mountain, got to look at my attributes. Yeah, that's big Bushy Mountain. So go back to annotation, select <coughs> big Bushy Mountain. I'm going to move that over here. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, my apologies. Um, where you place your text, you know, you guys are artists. You guys figure out where to put your text and all that kind of stuff. I understand that. Uh, so I'm putting the mountain names out in the big plain area because this is a this is a national park that I need to annotate and all that kind of stuff. So you move things around. But we're going to add the leader for that. Whoops. There we go. Now we'll add the leader. And select our box and point it at the correct mountain. And I have all the leader locations to be centered on the text as well, okay? And then let's do a couple more. So let's do Bennett Mountain. Let's move it up over here and right click at our leader, select the green box and point at our mountain and select this one and right click at our leader move the green box and point it to our mountain something like that okay so that is the easiest way to change your text symbols for an annotation feature class you just go up to annotation select it and turn on the attributes and then you have access to the uh, the symbol library that you can make all your different changes now a lot of people I'll go ahead and tell you now a lot of people don't use ArcGIS Pro to do everything okay I do I, I use it 
probably 95% of the time to do all my cartography, all right? I very rarely bring it into a third-party software and add my text layers. However, that is a fantastic way to do things, okay? Um, some of my big published maps I do bring into my Photoshop type uh, software and do all my text and like these leaders probably be better off doing it in a, a third party software to get them exactly how you want you guys are artists we're cart cartographers we do art and science at the same time uh, you guys know what I'm talking about but if you're new to ArcGIS Pro and you're frustrated about leaders on your text and things like that in an annotation feature class, this is how you do it. So supplement to part three of the annotation feature class. That's what I'm doing today. So anyway, uh, like and share if you would. Subscribe if you feel inclined. That would be great. Um, I hope that this helps you in your cartography in the future. So we will see you guys later. Thanks for watching.